The Poco F3 just announced. It's a really good deal. But how does it compare to other phones of a similar price? Today, that's exactly what you're discussing. My video series, So You Want A, is gonna focus on the Poco F3 today. Specs, how it compares to other devices in a similar price range, features and benefits that it might have for you, the end user, and ultimately, should you buy it. You guys know I love my little park vlogs for you guys. Beautiful rain-free day out here in Hanoi. Thought I might as well get out of the house, talk to you guys a little about it. The first thing that you have to understand about the Poco F3 is that it makes every single compromise possible in order to give you two things. The Samsung E4 AMOLED display and the Snapdragon 870, which is a Snapdragon 865 that's been overclocked. It's the same processor. On two two scores, it scores 10% higher than the 865 does, which is expected because it's close to a 10% overclock. But in real world usage, you're not gonna know the difference. Now, I've seen a lot of people call the Poco F3 a flagship killer, and we need to dispel that myth right now. The chipset is not a flagship chipset chip for this year. The display, on the other hand, it is much closer to flagship, but a flagship display doesn't make the device a flagship killer. The camera systems of the Poco F3 Pro or the Poco F3 aren't flagship either. It's the Sony IMX582, which is the 48 megapixel, four into one pixel binning uh, or sensor that was used on the Redmi K20. Not even the Redmi K20 Pro two years ago. The other camera is an eight megapixel ultrawide camera, the same ultrawide that I'm using right now to film this video on my Redmi Note 10 Pro. And then it's got the complementary depth sensor and macro camera, or at least the macro camera. I can't get all these devices straight. Now these two things are accompanied by a 4,300 milliamp hour bat, three? Or 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 33 watt charging, and a plastic-ish, metal-ish construction with Gorilla Glass on the front or the back, and then basically a plastic chassis with like a metal surrounding on the outside of it and a flat display. Needless to say, these are not flagship things. The first device I wanna compare this to is the Poco F2, because the Poco F2 is still available to buy in some markets. In some markets, it's the Redmi K30 Pro, and it stacks up pretty well. Same chipset, same internals, slightly bigger battery, same charging speed, a 60 hertz AMOLED display, which is not as bright as the 120 hertz uh, 2K AMOLED display that we have on the uh, Poco F3. It does have better cameras though in the IMX686, a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera that's decent, a pretty terrible two megapixel macro camera, but it's a device of the similar price range and you're not really sacrificing that much other than screen if you get the Poco F2. In fact, you're getting the better camera, you're getting slightly better battery life, and you're getting slightly better build with the Poco F2 Pro. This one, or the Poco F2, this choice comes up to personal preference. Screen or camera? What's more important to you? I gotta say, even though this G cam for the Redmi Note 10 Pro isn't finished yet. I'm getting way better performance for video, especially being that I can shoot 4K uh, on G cam and I couldn't shoot 4K with the stock camera app. That's to me a pretty big deal. Does it look good? I'm trying to use a different lav mic. The next device you might also be considering is the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. And before you start complaining about price not being the same, et cetera, just remember how this game works. We take the average MSRP, and then we add $100 to it, and then we subtract $100 to it to compare devices of similar price ranges. Now, 
The Mi 10T Pro has the same camera array of the Mi 10. Really pretty good camera and a way better camera compared to the ancient cameras that we have on the Poco F3. It's got OIS on the Mi 10T Pro, which is great. The ultra wide camera being 13 megapixels is a better sensor and better array. You're getting a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. You're getting the same 33 watt charging, getting the same performance, getting probably slightly better build. Really what you're sacrificing is AMOLED or LCD, but what you're getting in return is a whole much way significantly better camera. So camera or AMOLED? Camera or AMOLED? I think most people are going to be much happier with the Mi 10T Pro based on the fact that the camera is going to be a more likely than not tangible upgrade and with Gcam a much better upgrade compared to whatever their previous device was. It is kind of disheartening to go out, buy a new phone, and then have camera performance that's... Uh... And if you're gonna be spending money on the new phone, you really have to not care about cameras to pick the Poco F3. The reason why everyone cares about the Poco F3 so much is because it's a great value. It offers a lot for your money, just like the sponsor for today's video, Surfshark VPN. Now, I originally found Surfshark VPN as a sponsor because I was looking to purchase their service to use personally. And then I saw that they had a affiliate program and et cetera, and I reached out to them. Why would I want Surfshark VPN? Well, because I live in Vietnam, a place where the internet is not free, a place where the government loves to spy on people through the internet, and a place where I have to go on and use public Wi-Fi to do things like trading crypto, accessing bank information, or sometimes I just miss home and I wanna watch Netflix back in America and watch what I have available for American Netflix but I can choose to watch Netflix from any country in the world. And for my viewers, if you guys also live in a place where the internet isn't free and secure, you can get 83% off with my referral code, Mitchell. You guys can use my affiliate link in the description down below. And if you guys don't like Surfshark VPN, they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can sign up, try it. If you don't like it, no harm to you. Now the next device, that we're gonna compare the Poco F3 to is kind of an odd device. It's the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And this is really odd for one specific reason. Kind of the headline feature of the Poco F3 being the 120 Hertz AMOLED display, we have that on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Now it's not the same Samsung E4 panel. It's not going to be as good of an overall screen, but it's going to be pretty fucking close. That said, the Redmi Note 10 Pro has the camera array from the top of the line K40 Pro Plus, uh, which is only available in China. So. You really gotta decide, do you want the Snapdragon 870, 865, or the Snapdragon 732G uh, and UFS 2.2 storage versus the UFS 3.1? I've been using both of these phones side by side, or I've been using my Mi 10 side by side. It's gonna, again, same performance. And the performance is definitely tangible. It's, it's definitely a tangible difference in performance going back and forth. That said, if you've watched my video about tweaks in MIUI 12 and things that you can do so that more apps stay open in the background and you're not having to open and close apps, which is where you're really going to see a big difference in performance, especially between the storage and the processor speed, um, you can get the Redmi Note 10 Pro to be quite, quite responsive and quite, quite good in regards to daily normal usage. That said, for gaming, for video editing, stuff like that, 
you just definitely still can't compare, but that's not to say that the Redmi Note 10 Pro is a slow, unresponsive device. I think that the Redmi Note 10 Pro makes a very interesting alternative to the Poco F3 because a lot of people care about the cameras and a lot of people aren't mobile gamers and they don't care about N22 benchmarks. It's a really hard decision to make, but I think that the average consumer cares a little bit more about their device having a good camera as opposed to waiting an extra second or second and a half for an application to open. Even with the mods and tweaks I've done to the Snapdragon 732G, it's definitely a noticeable difference in performance. But the Samsung HM2 sensor on this camera is good. And we're going to see a ton of Gcam mods for it. I'm working with one of the developers on that right now. We're gonna see a ton of custom uh, ROM support because this device is an internationally launched device. Development for it is going to be awesome. Whereas we're not sure if the Poco F3 is gonna be launching as the K40 or the Poco and the international release of this device is still kind of up in the air with how much is getting released. I've never seen this before. We got stuff for plants, which is nice, to plants to grow up. But then we also have barbed wire. Another device which you might be able to find for a good deal is the Xiaomi Mi 10. Depending upon what market you live in and where uh, you're located, you might be able to find a Xiaomi Mi 10. In that case, get the Xiaomi Mi 10. The difference between 120 hertz and, uh, uh, the, and 90 hertz is not very much. Huh. At this hotel, you can rent a room for nine, seven, eight bucks for two hours. I wonder what happens there. I forgot to mention, I'm in the area of town that's popular for karaoke ohm or karaoke TV, which is happy ending karaoke. Now, by no means is this a comprehensive comparison between the Poco F3 and other devices. But what this does do is it gives users an idea of what kind of compromises or what goes into the decision when you have to buy the Poco F3. What you are possibly compromising to get this absolute performance from it. And really, is the performance that you have from this device going to be something that you're worth sacrificing camera performance for, that you're worth sacrificing uh, battery life in some instances for, build quality, because while the Poco F3 is a very good value, is it the right value for most people? So that's the type of thing that I'm trying to cover in these videos. If you guys like them, hit smash the subscribe button, share it. It takes a lot of time and effort for me to actually go outside and make these videos and I probably have to film each of these little clips a half dozen times before I can get the timing and all that stuff right. I'm out.